What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here. So week five in the Premier League is done. Got a lot of games to talk about. Long weekend, Friday to Sunday, so let's get into it. Kick it all off Friday, we have Bournemouth hosting Brighton. Both teams are struggling. Bournemouth managed to come away with a 2-1 win out of this. It's a great win for them because they needed it, and Defoe finally got on the score sheet for them as well. Uh, Jordan Ive had a hand in both goals, so he's starting to step up a little bit as well. But to be honest, this result helps neither team. You know, Bournemouth, it's a win that you should have expected to get at home against a struggling Brighton, but to have to find the win so difficultly, you really think that's not a good performance from them, but the result is good. As for Brighton, I mean, one win in five, they had one draw as well. This makes it three losses. I mean, that's, it's just not good enough from either of them. So a win definitely helps Bournemouth a little bit, but not enough to really say they're looking better. You know, they still look like they're struggling so far this season. So still need the acquisitions to click a little bit more as far as the team chemistry. Um, for Brighton, you know, they just, they've got to start putting together better performances. You know, getting a goal on the road at Bournemouth is not bad. Um, but you got to make sure you know you're at least getting a point out of these games on the road because by the end of the season that's going to add up. Um, so both of them still look like they're struggling. Maybe next weekend they can turn it around. But on to Saturday morning, kick it off first game. Palace hosting Southampton. Another loss for Palace. Another goalless loss on top of it. And yeah, I mean you get rid of Frank De Boer last weekend. Most of the time when you get rid of your manager, the next weekend you want your team to really step it up and look a lot better after the new manager comes in. Roy Hodgson, who has a long history in the Premier League anyway, he comes in and nothing looks different. You know, it's still the exact same as last weekend. Last weekend it was one nothing against Burnley, lost. They put in a great performance, just couldn't finish. This weekend, same thing, put in a good performance, couldn't finish. So it's clear it wasn't the manager that was the problem, it's the players. And I'm thinking this is the end for Benteke. You know, he's been a player that, for the most part, at, at Villa and then went to Liverpool, didn't really work out, but then he went to Palace last year. It looked like he was going to be a good quality striker, you know, getting goals every now and then, but he, he could finish for the most part. This year he hasn't done anything. So this could be the end of his career, maybe. Um, as far as Palace are concerned, though, you know, it's a good chance that they won't be in a relegation battle come January. It'll just be them bottom of the table with everybody else looking down from above. Um, next three games are against both Manchester clubs who both look really good. Chelsea, who looks really good. You're pretty much facing off against what will likely be the top three by the end of the, the year. Yeah, there's a good chance you're going to lose all three of those games as well. So really frustrating for them and really disappointing that they couldn't get a single point out of these first five games and now you're going to probably end the first eight games without a single point that's pretty worrying signs as for Southampton they've been struggling a little bit here and there so to get a, a win on the road good result for them uh, it's not been very bad it's not been terrible for them this season but it's definitely not been nearly the same as last season where they're just easily mid-table like I've said they look pretty close to the relegation battle. So this win will help push them a little bit closer to the mid-table spot that they're probably looking for. Uh, next game's 5 at, well, 10 o'clock Eastern time. First one, West Brom versus West Ham. It was at West Brom, 0-0 draw. Um, probably a better result for West Brom than West Ham just because typically they'll take a draw anywhere they can get. Uh, Tony Pulis and West Brom are both not really known for uh, uh, being a team that's going to go all out and win. You know, they typically will be one of those teams that they'll take a draw if they can get it. As for West Ham, though, they really needed a win. You know, getting a draw on the road is never a terrible result, but how they started the season so far, this is one they really needed to go out there and they needed to win it, and you didn't get the job done. So, once again, their signings aren't doing what they need to be doing for them. Obviously, Arnautovic is still suspended because of the, the red card he got, I think, two weeks ago. So, maybe it was last week. Um... But clearly, things still aren't really coming together for them. It's going to be a long, hard road if they can't manage to find some good points over the next few weeks. Uh, for West Brom, though, they need to make sure that they don't get so complacent and thinking that, oh, we'll be fine you know, somewhere mid-table by the end of the season, that these games where they probably should be winning, they drop two points here and there, and now all of a sudden they might start flirting with that relegation battle a little bit. So, uh, Next game... 
Watford versus Man City. Watford at home, Man City 6 nothing over them. Uh, I will defend Watford on this. They did get a pretty pretty tough uh, referee for, for them that game. First goal that happens, you know, Sterling handballs, ref doesn't call anything, and then immediately after it gets fouled, and the ref calls a soft one. And then off of that, Aguero's off sides, but still gets the goal anyway. They don't call him off. So automatically the first goal is already the refs just really sticking it to Watford. Um, and from the first, I, I think they scored like the 10th minute. The first 10 minutes, Watford weren't really doing anything effective, but they were holding Man City. You know, they were doing f- fairly well to pressure them high, you know, keep them playing around in the back, didn't let them come forward. And then one referee decision, and now all of a sudden Man City have a goal. Now they start stepping out a lot more, which Man City loves because now they've stepped out. Now you just play around them, and they've got enough quality up top to just continually put it away. Um, there was another offsides goal that was allowed. So, you know, you, you look at that. Obviously, Man City look really good right now. You know, they've got a lot of quality up top. But as far as Watford are concerned, I don't think the scoreline fairly reflects how they're playing so far this season. You know, they've looked really good so far. I think this is just a couple unlucky decisions go against them. Now Man City just, they have the momentum. Watford are trying to play too aggressive, and they just get caught out a few times. So, you know, take what you will from that. But in my opinion, this is more a reflection on, you know, how, how Man City look attacking-wise than it is how bad Watford look, because it was just one game for me. Um, next game, Newcastle versus Stoke. Really good result for Newcastle because Stoke have looked a really good team so far this season. So to get a 2-1 win at home, great result for Newcastle. They've needed these wins because they've had to face quite a few really tough teams recently and haven't been able to get much out of it. Uh, For Stoke, though, this will put a little bit of a damper on what's been a very good start to the season for them. Now, was this a fair reflection of the game? I don't know because... You know, like I've said before, NBCSN doesn't let us watch the the other games anymore. Now we have to pay for it. So I, I don't know how the play went, you know, if the one goal was something that Stoke had earned or if, you know, maybe Newcastle just dominated the game and Stoke managed to pick one and nearly get themselves back into it. Whatever the case, for Newcastle, this is going to be a huge momentum booster going forward. They don't have a midweek game because they already got knocked out of the uh, League Cup, so... They're going to get a bit of a rest for next weekend. For Stoke, this may or may not, you know, like I said, it does put a damper on the beginning of the season. I don't know if this is going to be a result, though, that they take away and say they, they either get frustrated or they could use this as a momentum booster and say, hey, we need to step up our game now. Um, so for this result could really go either way for both of these teams. Uh, but for, for this weekend alone, I'd say it's definitely a great result for Newcastle. Liverpool Burnley, one-one uh, draw at home for Liverpool. Not a result they're looking for. You know, it's been really, really difficult for them the past few weeks. They just they can't get it done. You know, they everybody was talking about them like they're it's gonna be their year. You know, oh they picked up Salah, great acquisition. Oh they got Solanke, good backup striker. Oh they got Oxley Chamberlain, great player. And they're just talking about it like oh. This is going to be it. This is going to be the year Liverpool really challenged for the title. And then games like this just show they still don't have it. And the biggest problem with it is they don't have a defense. You know, yes, the attacking line is great. Yes, they've got a lot of speed up there. I would say without Mane up there, there's a little bit less creativity. They did get Coutinho back, so he can help a little bit. But, I mean, honestly, without a defensive, a good defensive back line, you're going to continue to concede goals like this. And you're going to continue to draw. You're going to continue to lose. So I think this is a result that shows Liverpool still just don't have it yet. And until they get a good, solid back line, they're not going to have it. As for Burnley, this is another point taken away from one of the big clubs. You know, They've already beaten Chelsea at, at Chelsea. That now they've tied Tottenham at Tottenham and tied Liverpool at Liverpool. So another good point for them on the road. They are a very difficult team to play against, you know, <laughs> once again, just continuing to battle. It doesn't matter who they're facing. They always show up to play. They always show up to battle as hard as they can to get anything out of the game, and it shows. Uh, next game, Huddersfield versus Leicester. It's at Huddersfield, 1-1 draw. It doesn't really help or hurt either team. Uh, Huddersfield have already started off the season very well, so 
getting a point against the former champions. Not a bad result. For Leicester, probably looking to get a bit more out of the game just because they have had a couple results that went against them. They're probably looking to get a few more wins here and there just to push them up near mid-table so they don't have to flirt with relegation again this year. Um, so this result, I would say, probably hurts Leicester more than it hurts Huddersfield just because they already are sort of in that bottom half of the table region. Huddersfield, you know, I think, what was it, three wins in a row or something like that? Like, they were they were sitting pretty after the first three games. You know, they've had, a, I think, a loss now and then a draw. So, ten points, not a bad start to the season at all. And then the final game on Saturday, Spurs versus Swansea. Spurs draw at home against Swansea. The Wembley curse is just going to keep popping its ugly head up until they can manage to put a good performance in there. You know, they did well against Borussia Dortmund in the midweek. Yes, Borussia Dortmund probably should have had some goals that were wrongly ruled off sides. But, I mean, you got to beat Swansea at home. You know, yes, Swansea have gotten better. Yes, they picked up some good signings over the summer. You know, they, they do look a better team than they were last year. But it doesn't matter. You know, you're playing at home. You should get a win there against Swansea, especially if you want to be considered one of the best teams this year. So it's just kind of proving the point that I had at the beginning of the season, which is this new home is not working for them. You know, I don't know if it actually is some sort of like mental thing going on or if it's just the, the pitch itself isn't what they're used to playing on. But it's clear that Wembley isn't their home yet. Now, later on in the season, they could put a good string, string of wins together at home. Obviously, on the road, they're doing very well right now. So I don't think... This is going to be like, oh, they're not even going to make the top seven. I, I'm pretty sure they'll have enough quality to put some wins together and manage to stay up in the fight for the top four. Uh, but the fact that they can't do it at home right now is going to knock them out of the title contention fairly early early on. So a little disappointment for them. But for Swansea, I mean, point on the road, they have struggled of late. They didn't look really good against, who was it? I think it was Newcastle last weekend. So, you know, they've struggled so far. To get a point at Tottenham is a good result for them. So maybe they'll take some momentum from this and possibly put together a good string of performances, uh, get a few good wins on the road and such. But that was it for Saturday. Obviously today we have the two, I guess, big ones. Uh, the London Derby is obviously a big game anytime it's played, no matter how good Arsenal look, how bad Arsenal look, how good Chelsea look. Eh, they looked bad two years ago, but that was it. Um, but yeah, the London Derby is the big game. Man, you Everton, not really as big a game, but everybody was treating it as such because, ooh, Lukaku's returning, and ooh, Rooney's returning, and it pretty much went exactly how I expected it to go. Um, but as far as the Chelsea-Arsenal game is concerned, I already talked about this in my Chelsea review, but this is a good result for Arsenal. You know, it's it's a good performance. Yes, they probably would have liked to have taken three points away because they did have the better chances, uh, but to get a draw on the road, especially after a poor start, they've had a few good performances the past couple uh, games against Bournemouth and then against Colm. But today was a better team. You know, they had to face off against a team that has looked good over the past few games, you know, put in some really good performances. And they came in, they managed to dominate most of the game. It was a good performance from them, and in my opinion, it will probably give them some momentum going forward over the next few weeks. Uh, for Chelsea, it's not a momentum breaker, but it is something that is probably going to frustrate some 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 of the players just because I mean, you know, you want to get at home against a uh, winning home against your rivals, anytime you play them. So, yeah, a little bit of a mixed bag here, but I am going to say Arsenal probably going to take a lot out of this game, and then the Man U result, uh, four nothing against Everton at home. I mean, it was kind of a foregone conclusion at the beginning of the game. Everton have not looked good at all. Uh, the signings they've made have not done well. Calvert-Lewin didn't start. He's been one of their brighter points so far this season. So, yeah, I mean, I wasn't surprised at all. Yeah, the first goal was kind of a out of nowhere, like, holy crap, that was crazy. But, I mean, by the end of the game, they get that second goal late. And then just all of a sudden it opens up. And that's that's where Man U's been dangerous this year. Is the, the last, like, ten minutes of the game-ish... They just turn it on out of nowhere, and the other team is just so tired from having to defend that they just concede, concede, concede. So, yeah, I I don't think this really was any surprise to anybody. 
Uh, it's just it's been this way for a while. You know, Everton can't stop conceding. They can't really find the net. Man U look like they're on a roll and they can't be stopped. Stoke were the only ones that managed to do it recently, so no really surprise there. But that's about it for this weekend. Uh, right now, I'd say based on what I've seen, uh, the top four easily got to be the two Manchester clubs and Chelsea. Somewhere, you know, I, I don't really know how it's going to wind up at the end of the season, but those three are definitely going to be in it. And then it's probably going to be a battle between either Arsenal or Tottenham maybe uh, for that fourth spot. Liverpool look like they're not really going to be battling for it as much. They may have an outside chance later on. But right now, you know, Arsenal look like they're finding some momentum. Tottenham are doing well enough on the road. They should be able to do okay uh, to get into the top four. And as far as relegation is concerned, I mean, Palace look like dead set for relegation this year. Um, it's got to be between probably West Ham and probably Brighton. Uh, if I had to go with the, the other two going down. West Ham, kind of a shocking one to pick, I know, but they just can't seem to put it together. You know, I don't know what it is, but by now they should have already found some sort of way to get the job done. Um, the Bournemouth have an outside chance of also being there ahead of West Ham. Brighton definitely look like they're dead set to go down as well. So, yeah, those four are probably going to be the, the ones that are flirting with relegation the most. There may be a few other clubs in that relegation battle, but that's about it for this weekend. So let me know what your thoughts were on the games, who had the best and worst weekends. Let me know what we can talk about and discuss, all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe to future Premier League weekend reviews. I'll see you guys next week. Peace out.